Welcome to the Mystic Museum. Some of you probably already know, I am Mystic Dylan. And I am Mystic, no, I am Eric. This is Eric. So I'm the in-house psychic medium witch guru at the Mystic Museum. Um, and if you've seen Mount Olivia's channel, I talk about it quite frequently, but this is the man of the hour. He is the one who put the Mystic Museum on the map. My name's Eric, and I am one of the owners of the Mystic Museum and Beer Lady Vintage Oddities, which is two stores combined into one location. Uh, that way you can have more fun when you come here. Oddities in the front, yeah. witchcraft in the back. Yeah, and we're actually filming here, so if you mm -hmm. see this, yep. this is only a, a small yeah. aspect of what the museum has to offer. You have a 3,400 year old mummy mask on loan from Cairo. Come see it before come it goes it back. Before it goes back that we are petitioning to keep it. Crossing fingers, it might happen. And we also uh, host Club Coven. Yes. So uh, Olivia, the Witch of Wonderlust, she is one of our Coven members. Located right here in the Mystic Museum. Yeah, and we uh, run rituals and we have events. The museum has events all the time. Uh, we have uh, our occult speakeasies that we do all the time. We actually have one tomorrow night, which is gonna be amazing. Basically, it's just, you know, a, a fun speakeasy night with complimentary drinks and food, uh, DJ, psychic um, readings psychic by yours readings, truly, uh, rituals led by our club coven, um, and Dylan, and you know, our sorts of fun and amazing, uh, we always theme them to whatever the current event is, this will be one of the first announcements we're going to make tonight is we have an Evil Dead exhibit, September 7th. Now, what makes this show so amazing, we're going to be unveiling some original props from the movies and some of the parts from the franchise for the first time ever. Um, and this we are doing with Ghost House Pictures, which is Sam Raimi's production company. So, that's awesome. So that's one of the big ones coming up. Uh, not to mention a lot more for witchcraft classes and all sorts of things. Just follow the Instagram to see the flyers for the events and then the link in the bio will take you directly to where to purchase. And yeah. this is a season of the witch. So before I leave you to do what you need to do, uh, explain to me what you guys are talking about today. So today's episode is all about familiars. I'm talking about the myths and uh, misconceptions of uh, the familiar. The familiar is uh, supposedly a little animal friend. Do you have any witchy animal friends? I do. I have my 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 best friend, Dusty. Dusty the cat, who cat. Yeah. who can be? He's a uh, he's a uh, harness trained. Yeah, he walks on the leash. He can sit. Besides that, he's actually one of the nicest animals ever met. Uh, and they do say that a lot of people look like their pets, and I believe that to be true. You with totally us. <laughs> look like Dusty. He's got same color hair, everything. He's great. He's amazing. Absolutely. Have you ever had? Like, do you think he can see? I'm sure he's intuitive. He can see ghosts and stuff. He yeah, he's very intuitive. Like. Awesome, and he's yeah. also very intuitive to to my feelings and other people's feelings. That's uh, awesome. He, if he could be labeled as a service animal, he would. I would like to take him through a test because the minute somebody starts crying, he's right there, like on top of you. He's like licking the tears off your cheeks. Aww. Like anyone that cries, <laughs> not just you know. And then he's just really, really an awesome cat. And so the one question I have before I let you go. Yeah. Is, does your, just because you own a pet, does uh -huh. that make your pet your familiar? That is a good question. Ah, really? oh, I thought we did that later, you did that early. So, I'm sorry for all I you people out there. This. No, the answer is no. All right. Good. So, like, that like, for example, Juju, okay? Yeah. I did not wake up and I was like, I need to buy this snake. I was never, I was not thinking of owning a snake. Yeah. I worked at Disney World, at Animal Kingdom, and she was for adoption. And they did this whole sob story about like how snakes are like euthanized and killed in Florida. Um, and she was the last one, no one was adopting her. And at the end of my shift, I was like, I have to get the snake. So I feel that like something triggered it just comes me. To you. Yeah, it comes to you. So it finds you. The other thing too is that familiars, like you said, they're not, it's not, ju it's not the pet that you have. So it can also be, and we'll talk about this later, a spirit animal. So you could be attracted to dolphins. You don't have to own a dolphin for the dolphin to well, be your familiar. Well, I would familiar. say Dusty's definitely my, my Yeah, absolutely. He was a happy accident. And yeah. you know, we just randomly took him home one day and that was amazing. There so we go. Actually, probably one of the best parts of my life. Aww. There we well, go. 
well. Enjoy your time, guys. Have Thank fun with this Eric. museum. Bye. Awesome. Bye. Okay. <laughs> we have Dylan back. We're back. I'm so excited. Reunited and it feels so. What song was that? I don't know. I woo Woo Wednesday. Woo Woo Wednesday. That's how it goes. There we yeah, go, that's right? the one. There we go. Like Eric said, we're talking about familiars. So there are a lot of commonly asked questions about familiars, and there's a lot of information that you said is integral yeah, is to the the world of familiars. Right. So basis, what is a familiar? The familiar, which is assistant. Okay. It's supposed to be the witch's assistant. Right. So they assist you in your magic and your practices and your um, spiritual journey. Mm. Okay. So, what's the history? When did when did familiars first become a thing? Why why did they become a thing? All the good questions. In witchcraft, witchcraft has its own basis, it has its own theology, but I would say familiars are actually the one that was enforced on witches. So, real witchcraft does not include uh, familiars. Familiars were during the persecution of witches it was assumed that a witch had an assistant or a witch had a familiar who assisted you in your witchcraft and your occult knowledge. And essentially in modern witchcraft and in neo-paganism, that was something that was adopted. So during the Inquisition, during the Salem witch trials, during the witch trials of New England and Europe, um, whenever someone was accused, it was also say that they had a cat. That cat was their familiar. Say that there was a rat that was found in their house. That was their familiar. That was their um, sense of a uh, demon or something that assisted them. If they had a mole, so like say that you had a mole or a birthmark, it was assumed that familiar was sucking on your, uh, they used to call it a teat. You would suck on the witch's teat. Uh, and that's how you fed your familiar. And it was supposed to be a gift from the devil. That was the original origins it's just something that for some reason in neo-paganism and neo-witchcraft it got integrated into the practice they adopted the idea of a familiar they adopted the idea of using animals assisting in the magic i mean animals had already been associated yeah. with magic so like uh rabbits are one of them too people don't think of that rabbits are really linked with the occult mm -hmm. and mysticism but in reality the origins of the familiar the familiar was a demon or uh, a spirit that uh, assisted the witch in their diabolical working. All them damn diabolical workings. All them damn diabolical workings. So essentially familiars didn't even come around until the witch trials yeah. and those accusations. And not until they... the 17th century. Okay, so they're generally like, it's not this ancient, old, ancient old, thing. It's, no. it's, it's, it's when the witch trials started happening. Right? Yeah. And what my thing was is that familiars were a demon, right? that was assisting the witch in the form of an animal. Yes. But it's like, uh, in ancient times, I mean, there wasn't really like Christian demons that were- No, no, you know, because so they didn't believe that. So that's why I thought it was kind of interesting that, like you said, instead of us being like, no, it's not evil, like kind of like what everybody thinks, but also this familiars kind of were was. kind of like, no, we'll, we'll take that. We'll yeah, familiars. <laughs> absolutely. Now, I mean, in, in, when you look at antiquity, so animals are associated with a lot of deities. So Apollo, Hecate, Diana, they're associated with snakes. I mean, there are a lot of animals that are linked to magic. But for example, like when I, you know, I said rabbits, I, I said rabbits earlier, like rabbits are really linked to witches. So mm -hmm. rabbits were linked to Freya and Diana. And then so are cats. They start getting incorporated to the idea of the witch. They get linked with witchcraft. And then we get to the 17th century, then they start becoming familiars. If you've seen The Witch, if you've seen the I movie The Witch, that movie. That's such you know? A good movie. So they, that's a strong, that's a good interpretation of familiars. Okay. Okay? Yeah. So that is a good trope of familiars. Even Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, they talk about how Salem, yeah. is a demon right. and then inhabits the body of right. and protects this her cat and, and protects her, her so and helps her. What? Okay. Now, where it becomes weird in witchcraft is that all of a sudden a misconception is that a familiar has to be an animal that you own. 
That's not true. Okay. So it can be an animal that you're connected with. So it does draw a fine line between spirit guide or animal guide as well. I know several witches where their familiars aren't even animals. It's a skull. So huh. not even a real skull. They have a quartz skull. Okay. And that is your familiar because that is their source of power or they have a spirit in there that really think of familiar as a, a spirit. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. A spirit that aids you in your practice. A spirit that okay. aids you in your practice. Gotcha. Um, and the other thing that's really interesting too is that when you look at demon, okay, uh, demon is just a bastardized version of the Greek daemon, D-A-E-M-O-N, which really just meant spirit, not necessarily good or bad. Oh, it was okay. just a, a, a supernatural entity. But this, this is my familiar. This is Juju. This is Juju. As I mentioned earlier with Eric, Juju was not picked. I didn't wake up one day and I was like, I need a snake. Yeah. So my my attraction to Juju really happened accidentally and I saw her and I was like, there's this bond. Yeah. And I use her in my rituals. I'll use her snake skin mm -hmm. uh, for uh, when I do healing because snakes shed their skin, removal. So I use her snake skin in spell work and to me, and I've meditated with her, she's in my rituals, um, I will bring her in my circle, I've used her for public rituals as well, so I would say that she is definitely, she is my familiar in the sense that she does help me in my workings. Right, but it's she, not like she like brings you. No, <laughs> she doesn't, she doesn't bring me, oh look I found these children, yeah. let's take their soul, <laughs> or our master, like none of that. Come on over, come on over, Eric. So yeah, so the, the idea of like, the familiar being the witch's servant, that, that there's only so much, you know, she does help me, but she's not, you know, my servant, or right. she's not like, you know, there's not like, ah, master. Right. If you watch Salem, which is a good show to watch. Yeah? I, so I, I hate it so much. I love it. I, Laura, I love it. What does that mean? It means Why that I start out it? hating it and then I actually fell in love with it. Okay. Um, but they, so they have, you know, um, Mary Sibley, her familiar is a frog mm -hmm. and like she puts a frog in like her husband, her She's husband like, swallows a frog. Love. Yeah. And like controls them and like some other, one of the other girls, her, her familiar is a rat mm -hmm. and she has to sign her name in blood to the devil to get the familiar. So there are all these other stereotypes and misconceptions about the familiar. So what do you think about spells then to call a familiar? Do you, do you, is, do yeah, you seen, absolutely. Or have you had those work or like any, anybody? I haven't done one because I found my familiar. Right. I have heard of people, so my friend who's familiar is a skull. Yes. She did a spell to bring forth her familiar and she started having dreams of this crystal skull. And oh, she actually weird. went, yeah, and she was in a, she was in a thrift shop and it was like $75 and she bought this quartz skull and you know she's named it Amarac. Amarac. And yeah, she That's just had that name. dream, right? That is her familiar, and it sits on her altar, and it, it aids her. And and in that case, I I definitely believe that if that is something that you want, but don't feel that you need to have it. Another thing that I would say too, though, can you make your house pet your familiar? Absolutely. But like I'll tell you, my cats. They, they will knock down my circle. They will eat my candles, <laughs> eat my candles. Oh God. Uh, so they're not my familiars. <laughs> but I definitely feel that you can, if you create a bond with uh, an animal, you can incorporate them into your practice. Yeah, because I mean, I, Sweeney, my old cat, yeah. definitely was not my familiar. He was a nightmare. He was a 16 year old cat with really bad breath and uh i mean i would use his fur and his like the the whiskers that fell off and like i would use those in my spell work but he wasn't helping me directly right. you know? <laughs> he was definitely much more of a nuisance than he was any help when it came to anything with my practice and i would say too when choosing a familiar or when finding a familiar or when going on the hunt for a familiar just like you would do for anything, look up the history of what a familiar is. Mm -hmm. Because you may find that you do not want one, okay? Right. Because with that being said, I know a lot of witches who are like, well, no, why should we embrace something that was right. thrown off? 
So there are those witches that are like, well, familiars aren't a real thing. Yeah. They're not a real basis in witchcraft. But again, it's so like, I don't want one. My whole philosophy on things is just kind of like, if it helps you, precisely, then why not? If it helps you, why not? If it makes your life better, if it enriches your life, then I feel like, then why not? Right. But also, I do agree with that, you know, you don't need a familiar to be a witch. Right, yeah. I feel like, because I, I think a lot of baby witches yeah. will come to me and be like, I don't have a familiar though. And I'm, I'm like, I don't either. Right. Like, I believe that I met my familiar, two of my familiars when I was young. Like, yeah. very young. And now, I mean, I'm without them, but it's like, I don't feel but you like could, I need them. If they're no longer in this realm, so you could probably call on their spirit. Yes. Because I also know several witches who they've had their familiar, their familiar has passed on, and they will only channel that. Oh, okay. So yeah. The spirit cool. of their familiar. You were talking about with Eric. Yes. That sometimes instead of a familiar being like your physical household pet, it can be like an animal, like the energy of an animal. Like, right. Like I am connected to bears. I am connected yes. to jellyfish. Uh, scared the crap out of me. Like, me too. I was like, it's a dragon. <laughs> um, and I, so I have a deep affinity for bats and ravens and hyenas. Obviously, I can't go out and have one. So, just to clarify, like, you do not need to domesticate an animal in order for it to serve its purpose. Now, to me, those are animal guides. Mm -hmm. Not so much familiar, since they're not... The familiar is something that gives to you, I believe. So, like, okay. they contribute to you. Whereas, I think you're gaining wisdom from the said animal. So that becomes an animal, like a totem animal. I see. Whenever you see it, it instills some sense of, of knowledge or being. Right. Does okay. that make sense? Yeah. Some people, they dream. So I've heard of people who, who are able, like, when they um, remote view or when they astral travel and they dream, they'll have they'll have animals that okay. are with them and around them. And I was like, I guess those can be familiars yeah. if, if you have this symbiotic relationship, but it's in the dream giving. state. Okay. To me, the difference is a familiar assists you, okay. a spirit guide instills you okay. with wisdom, you know, or yeah. they're also messengers. Okay. So like, typically when I see a raven, I'm like, something's up. Mm -hmm. Or it's confirmation of something. Okay. I'd be like, okay. Hi, Brandon. Hey. Do you want to lend your homosexuality to, to this Please do. Video? Sorry, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not gay at all. This is Brandon. Thanks. Say hi, Brandon. Hi. And Brandon, <laughs> did you grow up Wiccan? I did, yeah. Look oh. at that. Yeah, I grew up in a Boom. goddess group. Why? Wow. Goddess group. What? Goddess group. Yeah. yeah. Look at that. I know, it explains all of my problems, right? You have, <laughs> you have two minutes. What are your views on familiars? Um, I'm not really familiar with it, no. It's interesting, I never really had to deal with them growing up mm -hmm. in, in terms of what I practiced, but um, I know a lot of people sort of rely on them. It, maybe you can speak a bit more about yeah, it. Yeah, no, like, I was just saying it was one of those things that was thrown on us from the, so like the Puritans and during the witch yeah. trials, they essentially came up with what a familiar yeah. is, and a lot of which is just and adopted. It's changed too. It it's is. a lot more. It's a lot more Catholic. Yeah. Than anything else now? It's yes. What I've it's found. really weird. Yeah. Then you have people who say that like Saint Michael is are familiar, and I was like, wait, what? What? <laughs> but now I imagine Saint Michael is like a little bobcat or like a little animal. <laughs> wait, what's your? So this is your familiar. This is my familiar. What's this is familiar? Juju. I don't have one. Yeah. 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 Uh, Olivia is my familiar as well. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. and Brandon, I've incorporated you into my familiar. I mean, I'm a witch, so. So I you can get me tea. Be... Oh. I love that I'm like surrounded by male witches yeah, today. Witches. Male witches. Male oh, witches. with our little witchy pride. Yeah. Woo. <laughs> Only available at Mystic Museum. Only yes. available. <laughs> and what a percentage goes to LGBT yeah. charity. So An LGBT charity. Uh, so. Highly suggest stop by Burbank, mm. California. Hey. Yeah. But <laughs> plug, plug, plug. <laughs> Amethyst butt plug. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we sell those Bye. here too. <laughs> That's probably our good, our good stopping point. Yeah. Uh, well, demons. Oh, demons. Demons. Technically, technically, I guess the familiar is an offshoot of a demon. Yes. You have to keep in mind, people, that demons are Judeo-Christian. The the demons that you think of, like Beelzebub, those are all Judeo-Christians. So when people are like, "Do you conjure demons?" No, because I don't acknowledge. 
I don't incorporate Judeo Christianity into my Same practice. Same thing when people are like, do you worship the devil? And Precisely. You're like, I don't believe in the I devil. I don't believe in the devil, so I don't, you know. Um, so Judeo Christian concepts. If you're talking about the ancient Greek daemon, um, you know, I definitely work with spirits. Yes. But not the demons like Beelzebub. I guess in reality, like just to wrap things up, if you want to use familiars, a familiar would be a animal or spirit helper that you have a close connection with, mm -hmm. uh, but typically one that is in servitude to you. Okay. Whereas yeah. an animal guy, I feel like I feel like familiars as themselves, people feel like because they're this like glorified thing, mm -hmm. and I feel like it's kind of like when. It's the same thing when you first like start into this witchy thing and you think like, well, I have to set up 18, 13 candles around me in a perfect circle right. and like do all of it. And when really you're just like, okay, I've got 20 minutes before I got to go to work. Yeah. Let me light this candle. Boom, boom, boom. Let me like Ow. something as glorious. Yeah. As. Or necessary. Or like, necessary. I feel bad right. for like, you know, I get this message. I've gotten this message. Too, it's just like, well, I'm in the broom closet. I live with my mom or like. You know, I can't do witchcraft, blah, blah, blah. I can't have a familiar. And it's like, one, you don't need a familiar right. to practice witchcraft or be a witch. And two, if you've, if I've taught you any, or the knowledge that I, I mean, your familiar technically can be a little skull or it can, doesn't necessarily have to have a be physical like a presence. Animal. Right, it can be a spirit that okay. you work with. Cool. There we go. Well, that's our little video on familiars here at the Mystic Museum. Again, a big thanks to Eric and Kiko for allowing us to film here and visit Mystic Dylan for any of your readings or your divination endeavors. Yeah, stop by for some of the events that Mystic Museum puts on. Uh, if you follow their Instagram, which will also be linked below, if you follow their Facebook page, you will get all of the information of all of those things and most likely you'll probably stop by and say hi to one of us so yeah yeah but other than that uh best of luck be kind to each other and may your gods treat you as you've treated others true that have a magical day bye bye